So now that we've finished describing the Java countdown latch, the Java cyclic barrier, and the Java phaser, it's time to turn our attention to considering the usage properties of all these different Java barrier synchronizers to see which ones you should use under what circumstances. So Java barrier synchronizers can be used for a number of purposes, which we've described before. So this is just kind of a summary of that. Countdown latch focuses on actions. In particular, you can use it as an on-off latch for an entry barrier. And a good example might be a video rendering program that has multiple threads and multiple cores. And you want to have all the different threads that are going to be doing the video rendering to wait on a countdown latch until the main thread tells it that everything's initialized and the threads can go and do their thing. So when the main thread invokes countdown, then that will shift the countdown latch count from one to zero, and then all the different threads could start to, to run at that point. So that would be one example, and that's an, clearly an example of an entry barrier. You could also use a countdown latch for exit barrier use cases, as we've talked about before. So you could have one thread, for example, the, the main thread, after it's set all the worker threads in motion, it might then go ahead and use another countdown latch to wait until all the different worker threads have finished their processing to go on and do something else. So um, what you do here is you can have the one thread wait until an action has been completed n times, irrespective of which threads were responsible. So basically what you can do here is you can, you're not really bound to threads per se, you're just bound to someone counting down a certain number of times. So we don't really care who did it as long as it gets down to zero, at which point you can, uh, you can go ahead and continue. A countdown latch is most appropriate and to some extent most optimized for relatively simple use cases. So uh, in particular, it does not support cyclic processing. So if you need to do any kind of cyclic processing, you're gonna to need to do something else. Cyclic barrier focuses on threads as opposed to actions or what they like to call parties. And what it does, as we've talked about a number of times, and as you've seen from the examples we've walked through, it enables a set of threads to all wait for each other to reach a common barrier point. So an example here would be the barrier that's used to wait for one or more algorithm iterations to finish before deciding to move on to the next cycle. We've also used it as an entry barrier in the context of assignment 4A. And the purpose there was to make sure that all the threads that were gonna do the being gazing operations were all at the starting point so that they could all begin at the same time. So nobody would get a, a head start if it, as it were. Cyclic barrier really requires a fixed number of threads or parties as they call them. And that can be overly limited. There's some situations where you may not know ahead of time how many threads there are. You may not always have the same number of threads, same number of parties. And so in those cases, using cyclic barrier is not really the right thing to do. The third type of barrier synchronizer is a phaser. And this can be used for either a, a variable number or a fixed number of threads. And, and as with all the other different synchronizers, it, it basically is used to enable threads to wait for each other to complete their processing, usually in cycles, although you can also do it for one-shot processing as well. If you have a fixed number of threads, however, using phaser is really overkill. There's, there's no particular purpose if you have a fixed number of threads. You're probably much better off using a cyclic barrier or a countdown latch. And uh, if you go back and take a look at the phaser example, that I updated over the weekend. If you go back and watch the, the new video I uploaded, it actually is pretty cool because it demonstrates how you can use a phaser for both a countdown latch-like behavior as well as a cyclic barrier-like behavior. But of course, the benefit there is you can use it for dynamic numbers of threads. So it's really by far the most general solution. So it's more flexible, it's more general, it's more powerful than the other types of barrier synchronizers that we've looked at so far. However, it's also more complicated to program, not ridiculously more complicated to program, but for simple use cases, I strongly recommend that you stick with countdown latch and cyclic barrier 
unless you really do need to take advantage of all the cool features in the phaser. So that's the end of our overview of usage considerations for Java barrier synchronizers. At this point, you should be certainly be well versed in using countdown latch and using the cyclic barrier for programming assignment for A.